Hello, this is just a brief introduction to why do we need to do motor evaluation in strabismus and how does motor evaluation differentiate the committent from non-committent type. The fundamental part of any ocular motor evaluation is to do ductions and versions. Ductions and versions allow us to identify the type of strabismus, whether committent or non-committent. In countenance strabismus, there is no underaction or overaction of any of the extraocular muscles. So the angle of strabismus is almost equal in all directions of gaze. In non countenance strabismus, there is either an underaction or overaction of one or more of the extraocular muscles. So the angle of strabismus is different in different directions of gaze. So in countenance strabismus, we can document the free motility in many different ways. One can say that the ductions and verges are full, that there is no underaction or overaction of any of the extraocular muscles. In such cases, the motor evaluation is almost complete. We can see here in this young girl with exotropia that there is no underaction or overaction of the extraocular muscles, and that the angle of the exotropia remains almost constant in all directions of gaze. On the other hand, in non constant strabismus, there is underaction or overaction of one or more of the extraocular muscles. This causes the angle of deviation to be different in different gaze directions. In other words, the gazes do not look the same. Non competent strabismus can affect the horizontal muscles or the cyclovertical muscles. In horizontal gaze incontinence, there is a problem in the horizontal muscles that causes the horizontal angle of strabismus to be different in right and left gazes. In this patient with limitation of abduction of the left eye, we can see that the patient has different angle of strabismus with the angle of strabismus increasing on gaze toward the direction of limitation, that is left gaze, and decreasing or disappearing on gaze toward the normal side. On the other hand, in cyclovertical muscle incompetence, there is a problem in the cyclovertical muscles that causes the vertical angle of strabismus to be different in different directions of gaze. In this young girl, we can notice a limitation of elevation of the right eye in the abducted position that causes a small left hypertropia in the primary position. The hypertropia increases on gaze toward the direction of limitation and decreases on gaze toward the normal side. Whenever we have a patient with non competent strabismus, we have two questions to answer. The first question is which eye has a problem? And the second question is to know whether the limitation is caused by underaction or paresis of the muscle of this gaze or an overaction or tightness of the opposite muscle preventing the eye from moving. In other words, one has to know whether the cause of this incompetence is paralytic or restrictive. The first question that one has to answer is to know which eye has the problem. In horizontal incompetence, the answer to this question is straightforward. The eye with the underaction is the eye with the problem. This is simply because there is nothing called an overaction of horizontal muscles in ocular motility examination. In cyclovertical muscle incompetence, the answer is not always that easy. This girl has left hypertropia that increases on right gaze. In such cases, it is hard to tell whether the left hypertropia is caused by a left superior oblique underaction with a secondary left inferior oblique overaction or a right superior axis underaction with a secondary right inferior axis tightness. The second question that we need to answer is whether the underaction is called a paresis or restriction. In this gentleman, with limitation of abduction of the left eye, though we know that the left eye is the affected eye, one would need to know whether the limitation 
is caused by a left lateral rectus anteraction or paresis, or a tightness of the left medial rectus and the surrounding soft tissues that is limiting the abduction. In cyclovertical incompetence, things might be a bit more complicated. If we assume that the problem is that the right eye doesn't go up enough, we need to know whether this is caused by a right superior rectus anteraction or a right inferior rectus tightness. And if the problem is in the left eye doesn't go all the way down, we still need to know if this is caused by a left superior oblique underaction or a left inferior oblique tightness. How we are going to answer these questions will be discussed in the next presentations. Thank you.